Retro Review and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Fast to raw! Oh, overwhelming force, yes? I'm trying to get my voice going. You know, I want to see if I can summon the wind! <laughs> Not that way. Uh, but... That came at the wrong end. Yes, yes. But you should try playing Skyrim on your Alexa, Google Alexa, yes. You should do that, it is fun. <laughs> Yeah, after what I heard about Amazon and recording people, no. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. on your no, 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 no. light bright something. You have a light bright, right? I haven't had a light bright. I never had a light bright. Damn. There's a new mod to play light bright uh, to play Skyrim on your light bright. Well, oh well. How on earth do you play? How do you play on a light bright? What? <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask. So anyway, in today's episode. No, no, we're. We're seeing this through to the end here, sir. What do you mean, light bright? Do you know what a light bright is? Unfortunately, yes. It created chaos in Boston. (laughs) Oh, oh, yes. Wow. (laughs) Unless they've come out with a digital light bright, which, honestly, in this day and age, I wouldn't be surprised. (laughs) Uh, But anywho, but anywho. um, In today's episode, we are going to review Legends of Magic issue number two. Uh, also, this episode is sponsored by Starstream. Thank you, my friend. And, well, in this issue, Sunburst reads to Princess Luna about the true legend of Rockhoff. So, let's hit into first impressions. Silver, what do you think of said comic? Oh, this is this is my favorite of the of the introductory oh. parts. This is my favorite. Mm, all Rockhoff right. is my fave. All hail the Rockhoff is. is. Uh... Why is that? Like, I've read it and I enjoyed it, but in terms of favorite, I am terrible with my memory, so I may need to read them all as we go through to really give my favorite later. All right. Well, here's the thing. This came out before we saw uh, Campfire Tales. And so this was very much an introduction to Rock Hoof. But what I found so fascinating about it is that this is the legend after the legend. This is what shows life still has things to throw at you and... Even when you have your goal, uh, there's still a lot of life to live. And you can let it slip away if you're not careful. Rockhoof is enjoyable. He's he's affable. But you see him hit a low point and lose focus, lose balance, which is a big part of being a boy. Mm-hmm. It means even more now, having seen the Campfire Tales. I thought it was kind of baloney that Rock, how Rockhoof got his powers. But this comic shows him earning them which is an important part of it. So more when we go into detail, but it's a great story showing that life's not done even when you've achieved your goal. And I greatly celebrate that. True that, true that. And as for me, this comic was a fun read. Um, Like you, I read it before Campfire Tales and was puzzled by, okay, um, this comic's out. So yeah, I mean... Um, rock hoof and stuff don't really care let's read it and it was a fun read it was the cautionary tale of balancing act if you have too much fun and no training you're gonna get fat and lazy if you're too high strong you're gonna go crazy someday so in this situation here rock hoof learned well he had to relearn stuff let's just say that and yeah we will talk about it more and you go through it because this book is a awesome read this is one of those books where i would highly recommend go getting it like if i mentioned last week there's a trade paperback for it and yes um go read it because it's a lot of fun so uh, let's head into the book if you haven't read it go out there and buy it and read it welcome back i hope you enjoy reading your book because it's fun so we start off the comic with Sunburst going to Princess Luna talking about the book she found and mentioning that, hey, um, Princess Luna, do you know the legend of Rockhoof? And Princess Luna saying, yes, I do know of it. Why? And, well, Sunburst here says that um, there's a sequel. And Luna gets giddy all over it. And then like, yee, let's squee, read it to me, read it to me, yee. Yes, fangirl Luna is best Luna. Yes, while trying to keep her composure. Sleeping Luna, bitter Luna, Luna Luna, mm-hmm. all the Lunas. Luna, 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 Luna. <laughs> yes, 
uh, while trying to keep her composure, by the way. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so, anywho, Sunburst starts reading the book, saying how Rokuf saved the town with a shovel, and they paraded him around town, and all the townspeople go out and see how awesome this dude is. And uh, who here? Uh, Stella... Stella... Or... Or the... How do you say that word? Sorry, Captain Orr's daughter. Orr's daughter. All right. So, anywho, um, um, meeting with the captain, um, Stella Orr's daughter, uh, giving jewelry, money, flowers, key to the town, and all Roku wanted is to be part of the mighty helm. And with that, Stella says, "Sure, you're part of the crew. Join." And yet she has to throw away the t- the the town key. Which is kind of funny. I don't think they they have all that many locks on these primitive dwellings. Yeah, but it's it, it's just for show, you know. When you give, when you say you give the key to the town to the heroes, why don't you? Hang on, I, I call baloney. If you're going to give me the key to the town, I I expect to be able to enter any property I wish at any given time. What does it even That's mean? That's how silver? it works. Really? No, but I wanted to. <laughs> So, anywho, uh, Stella here says that um, being a part of the helm means that you are going to be protecting the town and so on. Yeah, um, I'll give you this helmet and a trusty sword. And Rockhoof says, no, I'll use this shovel because it saved me so many times. And I shall be known as the Shovel Knight. I think we'll work on that name, but, you know, branding, branding is tough. You know. Shovel Knight is popular. It's okay, Rockhoff. We'll, 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 we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Oh, uh, yes. And talking about making it work, um, Rockhoff wakes up early, like he always does for his um, training, and he goes to the training ground. And <laughs> it seems that he is the first there, and he's very, very early. And you know what happens when you're the first to a location, right? You sit there, get a little bored, maybe a little tired. Maybe you think, oh, just sleep just a little. Just a little bit. Yep, and then Captain Stella comes in and like, what is this nonsense? Get up! Oh, man. Like, Rockhoof came too early and Stella says, you are here too early. You gotta hold, you gotta take hold of yourself. Like, just balance yourself out, man. Like, learn the time. Learn the time. So they start training. And he whoops everybody. Mm-hmm. By being really, really fast, have a lot of stamina in the obstacle course, and people say that, oh, look at the idiot, he has a shovel while we have a sword that looks like a toothpick. This call it a sword. And then he disarms all of them. Yeah. It's a spear! <laughs> oh, God. Silver, am I wrong? Well, hang on. Do they ever say, s- yes. say sword? Yes. I have to double check this. Take this sword. Yep. Yep, they call it a sword. I mean, it is a spear. Although, I guess one could argue that since ponies, most, unless you're a unicorn, rely on their mouths, see Cheerilee's bitterness, <laughs> uh, I have to re- rewrite that with my mouth. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, then you know there's some folks in the audience going, oh, go on. <laughs> but they could at least say Slowly. spear, right? I mean, <sighs> nitpick, it's a nitpick. It's a minor nitpick. It's a minor nitpick. It doesn't ruin the story at all. It's just like, Spear and magic helmet, magic mm. helmet, magic helmet, magic helmet. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, anywho, uh, we, where were we? Where were we? Yes. Um, Rokov, this arms pony with his shovel. He's a shovel knight. All right. So, anywho. Shovel knight, yes. Um, I can dig it. You, yeah. <laughs> so, anywho, once the day, once the training's ended, Rokov wants to go back home and follow his schedule of resting, eating a hearty meal and whatnot. But, hey, he has friends now. So his friend says, yo, Rockhoff, why don't you hang out with us um, to celebrate the saving of the town and whatnot, yo? And there's this place where if you finish an oat bowl, your meal is free. And, well, Rockhoff here cannot say no to a challenge. Just like that one pony in uh, Epic Wub Time. I could never say no to a challenge. Oh, man, who's that pony? Ah, beat you, Pinkie Pie. I'll do it again. Please, no. <laughs> Just, Oh, wow. Well. So, anywho, yeah, uh, it seems that Rockhoof is having fun. He's chugging down a, well, boatload of oats. Get it? <laughs> Boat, uh, yeah, no. 
Good alliteration. Oh, and I'm seeing some characters here. Like, um, you notice the pony at the back of Rockhoof with the blue? Yes. She reminds me of Lucia from uh, Fire Emblem. I'll take your word for it. I have not played Fire Emblem. All righty then. So, anywho, let's see. Um, Rock Hoof is kind of the popular guy in the group. Yay! And, yeah. So, let's see. This is the downfall of Rock Hoof. Woke up late. Got to the training camp late. But still, he's really fast. And he knows his way around the shovel. But, yeah. It seems the pattern of eating way too much food is getting him really, really down. First, what, celebrating for a one more day, sure it won't hurt, then one more night, then, you know, a week, then a month. Then, yeah, our little boy Rocco here got really, really big, not in that sense of the word. And yet he also recognizes he's got friends where we would learn later he was sort of ostracized mm. for his scrawny frame. It's an understandable fall from grace. Mm-hmm. And that's part of what makes this one of my favorite of the uh, Legends of Magic. Because you're like, okay, I get why this happened to him. I get where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. I like Rock Hoof. Don't be sad, Rock Hoof. I want you to win. Yeah. I want you to be a winner. Uh, I have to point out something. There's a male pony. And that male pony reminds me of the Legend of Zelda. Of course. Yeah. Wait, the one with the beard? No, no, no. Remember the male pony? M-A-I-L. Male. Ah. Let's see here. But I'm trying to remember... Oh, God. Oh, you're right. <laughs> so, anyway, let's continue on. Uh, so, Stella calls Rock Hoof to be here because he, uh, because the letter uh, calling from, who was it? I, I forgot the guy, but the Baron, yes. The Baron says that Rock Hoof is the man for the job to solve this problem. And one look at Rock Hoof, Stella questions like, yo, dude, you okay, man? You look... Like you have been hit by a truck, and yeah, Rocco says, No problem, ma'am, I can do this. And yeah, I'm gonna get my friends. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. And his friends are kind of lame, yeah, it's kind of friendly. And I have the question you know, you know, the uh, skin tone pony is that a male or female? Skin tone pony, that is a female, it's the one who looks like uh, from Fire Emblem, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, I mean, there's a line say that he's saying is he. That's why I was like confused for a bit. Well, there may always be a miscommunication, but these ponies are just dead weight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and Rock Hoof is, well, <laughs> they're not the only one to blame because Rock Hoof here has no stamina. So, yeah. yeah so, they're not helping and he's not doing great. Yep. It's not a good day to be in the Mighty Helm, especially with the volcano going. Yep. And five hours later... They reach to the top of the volcano and see that, yo, there's a creature causing havoc. And yeah, it's time for Rockhoof to jump in and solve this problem by hitting it. And yeah, Rockhoof, they, they ain't the way, they ain't the way. So yeah, he, they all run down the hill. Run away, run away. Well, but here's the funny thing. This creature is called a Sharoof. Ooh, really? Where did he say that? It doesn't. I had to... Well, let's see. I think it's mentioned for much later in the comic. Oh. But it, a large, man mythical creature found in Mapuche mythology of the Indian, of the indigenous Mapuche people of south-central Chile. E, an evil humanoid creature made of rock and magma. Oh. It said that Sharuf inhabits magma pools found deep in the Chilean volcanoes and the source of earthquakes and volcano eruptions. Sharuf are also said to be the source of magicians' ardent stones. That caused damage in volcanic regions. The only way to ab- to abate a Sharuf's appetite for destruction was to satiate the base the beast's taste for humanity by throwing sacrificial victim into the bowels of a volcanic mm. home. Much like the European dragon, the Sharuf's preferred delicacy came in the form of virginal maidens. Though I will question, how did they decide this? What you mean uh, using this creature or the myth? Well, the myth, I'm assuming that maybe one or two actual virgins got sacrificed. Uh, that may just be the mythology, but you never know. I don't know enough about uh, this 
area to know if that ever happened. But it's just like I have this picture of a monster. It's like, mm, how are the virgins today? <laughs> uh, slightly salty and maybe a little impatient, sir. Mm, that's just the way I like it. Yes, I'll have one of those. Thank <laughs> Thank you, Lord Dragon. <laughs> oh, wow. He comes to the side of Hero trying to rescue <laughs> uh, said virgin sacrifice. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I've had I've had a few in the past. Oh, wow. They're good. <laughs> oh, wow. But, you know, uh, yeah. The, the, the... Yeah, I'm just, mess- I'm just messing you up, aren't I, Norman? I'm just, yeah, yeah, you got me off track. Uh, also, I forgot to mention that um, Roku's buddies here are total jerks, like, they want to say that hey, we went up there and nothing, uh, everything's situation's normal. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah, we we can stop. We can we can go down. Like yeah, no, no, no. Y'all are sissies. Mm-hmm. But anywho, um, Rock Hoof says it's time to go and run away. And yeah, <laughs> here's the part that got me giggling a bit because, um, on Rock Hoof's second adventure, he failed. And well, when you work solo or freelance. You don't really have to report to anyone, but now that you're part of a crew, you have to report to the commander and tell them that you failed. Oh gosh, he got a tongue lashing. And he did, and the captain is hard on him. Yep, yep, I ship it. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's going to, just wait until he meets Mage Ben oh, yeah. But anywho, yes, yeah, so after the tongue lashing, um, Rocco here gets back into training by pulling a cart full of ponies and mending his shovel back together and getting tr- and lifting weights and also doing that pose from the karate kid that one that is crane yeah kid. that thing and now he's back in shape yes if i could derail for just a second how about i talk about rock Hoof's mm-hmm. design because i i freaking love it i mean you got the sky blue coat which contrasts nicely against his is uh earthy mane and tail but and normally i don't like ponies with beards because well they've already got a coat where's this beard coming oh, man, from dusty's gonna hit you then dusty dusty is well he's got he's a different sort is super much he's <laughs> the super manly beard there are always exceptions but i like <laughs> rock hoof with a beard mm-hmm. i think it just works really well it's stylized it really conveys but the biggest thing is his cutie mm-hmm. mark do you know what this is called? It's the Trinity, right? Nope. What was it again? I I seen it before, but I forgot. Well, here's this. Here's the here's the trick question. No one knows what it's really called. That meaning has been lost to time, to time in memoriam. But the term that's being used right now is a uh, valnuk, valnut, I should say. It is a combination of valor for slain warriors. And nut or not. So it's a knot of, of for the slain warriors. This thing appears in uh, Norse iconography, often in the presence of Odin, who, among his many duties, looks looks after the dead and decides who's worthy. And so it's very symbolic of the eternal hunt in the afterlife. It's very symbolic of, well, life and death and holding that power. And son of a gun, if as we enter this this final act of the comic, that's going to be Rock Hoof in a nutshell. He's responsible for the life and safety of everyone in town, and his decisions are going to have an impact on everybody. True. Everybody. True, true, true. true. So I find that just wonderfully appropriate. And talking about his design, yes, I do agree that he looks good. Um, the long flowing mane with the curls and stuff like even the braided hair kind of thing it fits the um, Norse Norse motif and especially all these wrappings around his hooves and stuff those are Norse inspired like he looks Nordic he's on the Nordic track although maybe he can have like some uh, chain shaped burn marks in his hooves and there's a pair of swords under his yeah, 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 yeah. and probably and something like... what, uh, let's see um, probably a shield that comes out out of his right hooves and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, we, we could do it. We could do it. And probably a severed pony head. Yeah. And it, that talks and offers wonderful commentary. Yeah, yeah. mirror. <laughs> and he has a little sidekick. It's like, boy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. wait, we get my two by four, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> boy, get off the dang roof. 
Uh, but anywho, talking about the psychics, uh, the boy. Oh wow, I am forgetting her name. So anywho, uh, talking about psychics, um, Stella yeah, or Stella or she's going to go investigate the mountain herself. But Rockhoof here says, "I'm coming along." So well, yay! Um, he's fit, he's ready, and they do go back to the top in ten seconds flat. And she's a much better traveling companion than the yep, other yep. ponies. I have to pause here for a bit because when I first saw Stella here, it reminded me of Dragon Age. One of the characters from Dragon Age. I think Inquisition. Dragon Age 2 then. Yes, it reminds me of her. Well, I, I don't know Dragon Age, so I'm afraid I can't help you uh, on that on that uh, regard. Right, then. But I love her design. I wonder... Well, it's kind of pulling a Tony Stark here. How, how does she see the other side? <laughs> She turns a lot. That sounds exhausting. Oh, well. No comment then. But still, um, they discover the creature. What, what did you call it again, Silver? Uh, the Chufa. Chufa. Uh, so, anywho. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly. Oh, Chuf. C-H-E-R-U-F-E. Uh, Chiruf. Chirufer. Whatever it is. Yes. Huh. It is mentioned in the quickie, but not in the comics. That is strange. Chiruf. Yes. Of course, it's always evil. That's the thing. Joseph Campbell said in The Hero of a Thousand Faces that we populate the unknown with our fears. Creatures are, you know, they represent our our fears of being eaten, the, our fears of violence, uh, perhaps even our desires, you know, uh, mermaids and vampires. One thing I've noticed with My Little Pony and uh, in both here and Pony PPPOV with the oh the trihorn bunya okay, yeah they abandon the whole oh this creature is evil or it wants to you know devour you or it's such a terrible menace and they make it a puppy mm. kid did a puppy and then they and then with the sharuf we're about to learn that it's not evil and i kind of like that it's always it seems more believable this is just a creature doing its own mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. And while it's still powerful and dangerous, it's not evil. Well, um, who mentioned this before? Because every story, sorry, um, every character has its own story and they perceive themselves as the hero of their own story. You won't go around saying that you're the evil bad guy. Well, huh. yes, I will. Unless you're, yes, I will. <laughs> unless you're a I mean, Sith, then yes. Dark side of the force bestows powers that ponies would consider unfriendly. <laughs> that theory just fell down the wayside. Oh my goodness. I've been, ju- I, I just watched a playthrough of, um, Kotor. And if you play the dark side, you're mustache turning evil. My goodness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anywho, let's get back on track, my friend. Just that I love the, I love what, the, what we're about to learn about the Sharuf and why it does what it does. And also why Rockhoof is really a hero. And here's the thing. Um, Stella and Rockhoof notice the Sharuf um, blasting its or throwing rocks at a certain location. And, you know, this is normal? No? And Rockhoof here take, waits and thinks and yes, he found the answer and calls to the creature to stop. He brandishes mighty shovel and digs a hole and revealing lava. And Guess what? It's a baby! It wants to go back to his mommy! Yay! Although, I gotta say, I feel for the Sharuf as it looks at that shovel, and then that face as Rockhoof is digging, dig, 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 dig. It's like, I'd be like, what the holy hand grenade are you going on about there, sir? Uh, well, at least um, he did the job, right? And yay, baby is reunited with mommy, and everything goes well. And yay! All good, all good. And and yet the captain notes, so you saved the town again. Huh. Yeah. I and you saved it from a baby. <laughs> yep. Uh that okay, we can leave that part out of the ballot, right? <laughs> right? Oh wow. So we go back to the present day where Sunburst is reading to Luna and Luna goes on a fit saying, Wait a minute, that cannot be the way the story ends. Rockhoof learns a lesson about the value of hard work. And yeah, Starnbus says, oh, wait, hold on, there's more, there's more, there's more. Um, until one day, the captain invites him out to a team party, and since he couldn't say no to his captain, he agrees. 
uh, Rock Hope discovers that determination and hard work are important, but that he could set aside time for relaxation and friends. For all good things require work, but balance is the most valuable skill of all. And with that, the story of Rocco's legend ends and Princess Luna is pleased. Yes. Which means that uh, Sunburst will not be hung today. Yes. Today. Uh, but Luna here is such a fangirl for Rocco. <laughs> yeah, it's almost, a, it's, it's actually kind of a shame that she didn't get to meet him in the actual uh, uh, shadow play. Oh, was she not there? At least until the very oh, end. Yeah. Well, she they didn't meet until the very, very, very end. And by that time, she didn't have time to fangirl. But I imagine her just sort of off to the side, <clears throat> squeeing internally at seeing yeah, Rocco. Yeah, yeah. It's like, look at the size of that shovel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, baby. Anyway, episode ends. Or comic ends. So, anywho, um, Silver, what do you think of said comic? Oh, I, I like I say, this is this became my favorite of them. It showed what Legends of Magic could do because it complements things nicely. When Rockhoof got his strength in Campfire Tales, I called baloney it was just sort of deus ex hey you've got superpowers now why did the land give it to you because you're the only one willing to do this was it within you all alone i don't know it doesn't make sense yeah true that true that like i don't know there's no logic because he started digging and then shovel hits something and he became powerful and big and swollen and yeah he just well dug a trench but how did and he dug a trench at super speed? Yeah, but how did he got the power? No explanation. No. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Yeah. And so here's a story where Rockhoof has a power that he kind of earned but didn't. If that's a contradiction, but at the same time he was worthy of it. But because it was sort of magically bestowed rather than earned. I think it's easy to let that slip away. Here now, he has to earn it back. And it can't be through magical manifestation. It's just, I need, I have to earn it back. I have to work for it. And that's the legend behind the legend. And I think it works really well. It's like with Rainbow Dash and joining the Wonderbolts. Things weren't all hunky-dory perfect from, from, happily ever after from then on. In fact, for a good while, uh, she was kind of having a rough go yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, she, she, she wasn't perfect, but still. No were the Wonderbolts. And the Mighty Helm, the, these ponies that Rockhoof wanted to join for so long, they weren't anything to sing home about either. I mean, look at the ones that went up the, cl the cliff with yeah. him. But I uh, don't know, man. Like, quality control probably is a strong contrast to the Wonderbolts. Why did they call the Wonderbolts back then? Well, there were no Wonderbolts back then. They didn't hit the scene until Lu Luna got oh. banished. What were they called back then? Like the Flyers, the Pegasi from Crowsdale. Oh, the Royal yeah, Legion. Yeah, the Royal Legion. Like compared to the Royal Legion, <laughs> like, uh, the Royal Legion could fly, could run circles around these ponies. Well, <laughs> Flash Magnus would certainly post yeah. that, I think. Oh, uh, but still. Any more, Silla? No, just that it's my favorite. I love the, the symbolism of the Valknut. <clears throat> Uh, I enjoy that they took took a creature. Okay, they took a creature from uh, South American mm -hmm. mythology and transported to Norse. That's unexpected, but yeah, not bad. It's logical if you think about it, because the lava currents should be connected, right? True, but I I'm assuming that Vikings had volcanoes somewhere, probably in their. So I'm not sure, but basically, mythology often tried to explain the world but it was shaped by our fears mm. the unknown and there ain't no shame in that it's just what it was true 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 but basically i just love everything about this comic uh the only thing that really trips me up is why did rockov want to join this, these wimpy mighty helms ponies? Well, think about it um the mighty helm represents a authority figure where joining us means that you're awesome that you're um, you're meant for something. It's something like joining Overwatch. Overwatch means something. We were just talking about Overwatch before we started recording. But uh, 
it's true, but then we're also confronted with the the reality does not always meet the mythology or the or the idealism. Though I guess that's one thing Rockhoof doesn't struggle with. The fact that the mighty Helm are not all he thought they would be. Mm-hmm. And think about it. Like, not everybody who joins S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to be a Captain America or Spider-Man or a Black Widow or whatever it is. You're still going to get your Agent Coulson, your um, Robin and stuff, and just people who do normal things like your janitors and whatnot. They're still going to be. Well, the, I mean, there was that guy who was playing yeah, Cal. Yeah, yeah, it's that guy too. So you got to get your normal Joe Schmo. So... Yeah, joining part of a crew or a team means, well, doing something. At least you're doing something for the better good or something. You're part of the team. The greater yep, good. The greater good. Shut <laughs> it! So, anywho, um, as for me, I like this comic. This comic is a gentle reminder of balance. You can all work and no play makes Homer something, something, something. Go crazy? Don't mind if I do! <laughs> I love that. Uh, but still, yes, um, you have to go, you have all play, no work, no good. You have to have play and balance, like play work balance. Like you need to have that yin and yang dynamic there. And reading this, yes, this is what happens if you don't have that balance. And as for the creature, I do like it. I, I didn't know it had a proper name till now, so yay. And I also learned that um, ponies have asparagus shaped hot dogs. It's a thing. They already have carrot-shaped yeah. hot dogs, yeah. so why yeah. not? And yeah, so this comic here is a lot of fun. Like, I, I, I won't say that it's my favorite for now because I'm forgetting a lot of things. So as for the two comics that I read for now, I would say that this is up there for now. Well, that's a good deal right there. So anyway, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's review? Well, I believe it is time to get back to reviewing episodes. There's still a good chunk of season eight we must go through. We must traverse. And so, having... Let's see. Last week, we covered Fake It Till You Make It. And so, next, we're going to have Granny's Gone Wild, the most unfortunately titled episode in the entire series. I know. And I know... <laughs> Here's the thing. Hasbro got to know what he means. Hasbro got to know. And this here is like, you know what? They they don't really care. Like They just says, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So, and let's face it, what... what, what as interesting as it is to see the grannies doing their thing, a lot of people are were talking about Trixie's papa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll get to see all the familial dysfunction there. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of things to talk about here. Yeah. So, anyway, this will be for next week's thing. So, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. We also have a Twitter. The Twitter account is at the show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the YouTube under Silver Quill or After the Fact. You can find me on DeviantArt under MLP-Silver-Quill, where I do my Pinkie Pie Says Good Nights before new episodes. And you can find me on Equestria Daily, where uh, I post a review every Wednesday of either brand new comics or older issues that we haven't covered yet. And let's see, you can also, I believe that this will... Hit the streams just as BronyCon is about to get going. So you can find me there. All right, sweet. And I will look forward to seeing everybody. Sweet. Don't forget to talk to him about Ladybug or the word woke. woke. We, we already established woke, yes. right? We established woke, but I, t- I still don't understand what I mean. <laughs> what does it mean, Norman? I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> and why, why is Ladybug like this? You sick. You sick. Oh, so anyway, and also please subscribe. And read us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. And you can also catch us on PonyValive.com. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. We have your support. You'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I'd like to thank your cats, our stream, myself, like Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You have been really, really awesome. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Mies Show. See ya. Fast room. Oh no. I'm still working on that. So, Shovel Knight. Yeah. Shovel Knight. 
I never played it, but I get that joke. I get that reference. I'm not old. <laughs>